Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be amongst all of you here uh, when you are discussing such an important topic, which is uh, of great uh, importance to my country, Mauritius. Well, uh, let me begin first by congratulating the Inter International Institute for Environment and Development for organizing this event. Right at the outset, I would like to let you know that I'm not, I'm not an expert on the topic, but I will certainly share with you what Mauritius is trying to do to promote the blue slash ocean economy and sustainable development and management of our ocean. Mauritius, as you might know, has an EZ of 2.3 million square kilometers and an extended continental shelf of 396,000 kilometers square in the Mascarene Plateau, jointly managed with the Republic of Seychelles. We are the world's 20th, 20, 20th largest country in EZ size, with a vast and largely untapped potential of our oceans. Mauritius has therefore, since the last few years, been engaged in developing the sector in a more structured and sustainable manner. Well, we started uh, with the crafting of, the, of an ocean economy roadmap and the creation in 2015 of a Ministry of Ocean Economy, Marine Resources, Fisheries and Shipping to pool under one roof all ocean-related activities. The vision of the government is to transform Mauritius into an ocean state by promoting ocean economy as one of its pillars of development. Our ocean economy roadmap initially focuses on actions in seven main clusters, ranging from fishing to marine renewable energies, amongst others. Currently, cur contributing 10% to our GDP, our ocean economy is driven by established sectors, namely coastal tourism, fishing, seafood processing, and port-related services. We are aiming to the con at the cons consolidation of existing sectors, as well as the development and nurturing of emerging sectors. New, new players have established themselves in the sustainable fishing sector, notably in industrial aquaculture, the development of a bunkering hub as well as the construction of a new jetty for such activities. While these new segments of the sector will obviously take some time <coughs> to reach their full potential, we are hopeful that their development will enable the marine sector to become the economic pillar that we want and broaden the economic space of Mauritius. Uh, let, let me now address some actions undertaken on a micro level to promote and develop the marine sector in a sustainable manner. As a small island developing state, the importance of sustainable management of our ocean resources cannot be emphasized enough. Indeed, Mauritius has always advocated on the subject in international and regional fora and the government has endeavoured to create the conducive economic and fiscal infrastructure to encourage a more sustainable and environment-friendly exploitation of our marine resources, be it in the fisheries sector or in the broader marine sector. When it comes to the fisheries sector, uh, the sector has a very important historical and social cultural importance to Mauritius. Traditional fishing is part of our folklore and the economic sustainability of our small-scale fishermen has always been at the heart of government strategy in this sector. However, the traditional methods are no longer sustainable nor are they economically viable. We have increasing pressure in the lagoon from coastal development, agricultural runoffs, industrial pollution and intense fishing activities inside the lagoon. In the early 2000s, the government came up with a policy to control lagoon-based activities so as to allow reef recovery from the compounding impact of unprecedented climate change and anthropogenic activities. 
all the measures adopted, a shift from lagoon fishing to off lagoon fishing around government deployed and maintained fish aggregating devices, coupled with training on fishing techniques and fiscal incentives to fishermen, have now significantly attenuated the impact of fishing on the marine ecosystem inside the lagoon, as well as significantly increasing catch to fishermen day. The change in fishing methods and target species such as albacore and yellowfin tuna, among others, has positively impacted on the fishermen community, which contributed to increasing catch per unit effort, reduced search time and generated better income streams, thus gradually contributing to raising the standards of living. Uh, the government in its last national budget has also announced several measures for the ocean economy, including financial incentives such as a grant of 60% of the cost of acquisition of outboard engines and fishing nets by fishermen cooperatives and buyback scheme introduced with financial compensation to fishermen for, rel for relinquishing their fishing nets, among others. Aside from the fiscal policies, the government is also actively looking at supply-side policies, notably boosting up research capacity on the ocean economy, and in that regard, the merging of our Oceanography Institute and our Fisheries Research Centre into one single institution. We are hopeful that such me measures will contribute in creating a more effective and efficient fisheries sector, but particularly for our small-scale fishermen community. Well, when it comes to marine and coastal ecosystems, as you all know, the coral reefs harbor over 30% of all marine biodiversity, bear a high productivity in the food chain and are imported carbon sink to mitigate climate change and a barrier to beach erosion. Yet, reefs surrounding marines are threatened by massive degradation, continuous pressure from a combination of natural and human-induced activities and climate change. Most of the anthropogenic-induced impacts are gradually being addressed at the national level through environmental impact assessments, interministerial committees, policies, regulations, and sensitization campaigns. Uh, moreover, since the 90s, in order to reduce fishing pressure in the lagoon, the government has progressively formulated, <coughs> reviewed and implemented several strategies through the proclamation and management of marine protected areas, promoting fishing out around the fish aggregating dev devices which I have just referred to. We have also closed seasons for net and octopus fishing. We have extension of ban on sea cucumber fishing, amongst others. Prohibition on sand mining, coral removal and trade, interdicting jet ski activities in the waters of Mauritius have also proved to be essentially policy measures for effective management of coral reefs. Overall, it is our belief that in order to have an effective reef conservation plan, a multidimensional approach to reef research is central and emphasis on their biodiversity, ecological threats, thermally resistant species, reef complexity and vulnerability. <coughs> uh, we have also a marine spatial plan which is being developed for a sustainable resources utilization while preserving the integrity and function of marine ecosystems in accordance with SDG 14. This marine special plan will embrace a multi-sectoral approach in view to coming up with an enhanced and more focused plan for the Republic of Mauritius through our huge EZ and will cater for sustainable exploitation of marine space while whilst avoiding conflicting usage to spatial overlapping. Uh, I 
I'm sure you are, you are fully aware that at the level of the Commonwealth, Mauritius co-champions together with Australia and Belize, the Action Group on Coral Reef Restoration, and has joined the Clean Oceans Alliance, spearheaded by the UK and Vanuatu, which is committed to tackling the problem of plastics in our oceans. We, it is also our intention to join the Aquaculture Action Group that will focus the on the development of environmentally compatible, financially viable and socially acceptable aquaculture. Uh, let me now come to uh, the, I, I would believe, the most important uh, segment of this, uh, today's discussion, which is the inclusive governance of ICs. You know, one major issue for us over years in this area has been illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing which Mauritius has endeavoured to combat with a plethora of measures taken both nationally and in collaboration with our regional and international partners. The government has adhered to the agreement to promote compliance and international conservation and management measures by fishing vessels on the high seas and the agreement related to the conservation and management of straddling and highly migratory fish stocks of the United Nations law of the sea. <coughs> Mauritius also has it, is also a member of several commissions in favour of the long term conservation and sustainable use of fishing resources. I'm not, I'm not going to list all of those commissions, but I'm sure you are fully aware about all of them. At the national level, a unit based at the port has been set up in Mauritius in 2009 to monitor the vessels of all fishing vessels, to monitor the activities of all fishing vessels calling in the port and to ensure that we are honoring our international obligations. Well, in spite of the meaningful progress made over the years, more needs to be done in creating a better global understanding of the importance of a sound governance of the high seas and its key of importance in the development of a sustainable blue Mauritian economy. We are hopeful as Mauritius that the ongoing high seas negotiations will bear fruit and produce the international legally binding instrument under the UNCLOS that we all need for the conservation and sustainable development of marine biological diversity in areas of beyond national jurisdiction. Uh, distinguished participants, in, all, in, all, in our efforts <coughs> to promote the sustainable development of our ocean economy, we have come across certain challenges, particularly for a small island nation like Mauritius, such as unavailability of local experts and highly prohibitive cost of services of overseas consultancy. We will need to invest more acquiring competencies such as marine ocean engineers and fisheries economic planners to lead and drive the ocean economy projects by building capacity to carry out high-tech research in the EZ. <coughs> Similarly, the lack of scientific information on the resources available in the EZ is another constraint that needs to be addressed especially in the absence of high-tech ocean research vessels for ocean data mining and expertise to collect scientific information on marine resources such as new fish stocks, hydrocarbon, mineral and gas. The central economic question around optimal use of economic resources also poses a challenge here and endangers competition among the various users of the lagoons, such as the tourist industry, fishermen, aquaculture operators and other coastal users to severe coastal squeeze. These are all challenges and policy gaps that the government is doing its best to address at the national level. However, the, de the development of a sustainable blue economy cannot be effectively done without international cooperation and regional alliances. The cooperation of development partners, research agencies 
and indeed think tanks and institutes like the IIED are required in areas such as transfer of technology and knowledge, training and oceanographic research, collaboration, control and monitoring of regional waters to effectively combat IUD amongst others. Before I conclude, I would like to assure you that Mauritius also stands ready to play its role and share its experience and lessons learned from the past years devoted to developing the ocean economy. I wish you all a fruitful session. Thank you for your attention.